Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, November 1st, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Why in the world the FBI would decide to jump into an election with no evidence of any wrongdoing with just days to go? That's a good question. <laughs> Hillary Clinton says the email scandal is nothing but a distraction. And if you don't believe her, you can always fact check at HillaryClinton.com. <laughs> Plus, the Kathy Shelton rape case. How Hillary Clinton blamed a little girl for her own rape. The only sexual assault case that the media doesn't care about. I'm standing up for what's right for me because I know it happened and um, she's trying to make me look like a liar and that I asked for it. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. While Hillary Clinton is seeing her poll numbers in a free fall, 40% of her supporters are now saying, you know what, I'm not so sure about Hillary Clinton. Following this announcement from the FBI that they're going to reactivate her investigation, they're saying, what's going on here? Well, Hillary Clinton has made the rounds today to tell everyone, look away from the burning dumpster fire. There's nothing to see here. This email scandal is a distraction. There is no case. So this is her on the, the campaign trail there in Ohio. Uh, she says, I'm sure a lot of you may be asking what this new email story is about. Why in the world the FBI would decide to jump into an election with no evidence of any wrongdoing with just days to go? Well, that's because you should have been indicted a long time ago. That's the only mistake that they have made by by pulling this out, you know, just a week or so before the election. They should have indicted you months ago. That's the big issue here. But she just says, you know, they're not going to find anything just like last time. Look away. In these last days, let's not get distracted from the real choice in this election and the consequences for your future. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton herself and all of her minions have gone full tinfoil hat. They've, they're pulling out all of the conspiracy theories they can possibly muster. Of course, they've been pushing this Russian agent thing. People have even been calling James Comey and saying that he's in cahoots with the Russians now. Uh, but last night I was seeing on Twitter just thinking, oh goodness, oh Lord, what is going on now? They were really pushing this story about this Russian server that was allegedly inside of Trump Tower. And she tweets this out. You know, it's, it's time for Trump to answer serious questions about his ties to Russia. And then she goes on to point out he has a secret server. Yes, Donald Trump. Okay, so first of all, Hillary Clinton is basically making the case that someone would have a secret server for nefarious reasons, not because it was just convenient. So here, once again, she's saying, well, I have a secret server. Well, you have a secret server, and it's nefarious, and you're talking to the Russians. So, and of course, this is after Harry Reid says to the FBI, demands that, you know, tell the world what it is you're holding out against Trump and the Russians. Um, so they're, they're really going... Let me just tell you, this was from one anonymous veteran spy who gave the scoop to Slate.com and to Mother Jones, okay? These are the sites that are like breaking this big scoop about this Russian server, okay? <laughs> well, so then the New York Times comes out and the FBI, I mean, immediately debunks this and they're like, look, we investigated Donald Trump. The FBI sees no clear link to Russia. So you just know Hillary Clinton is going rats foiled again. I would have tricked you if it were for those pesky kids. Ugh. So the FBI is talking about for much of the summer, they were pursuing a widening investigation to the Russian role in the American presidential campaign. Agents scrutinized advisors close to Trump. They looked for financial connections with Russian financial figures. They searched for those involved in hacking the computers of Democrats and even chased a lead, which they ultimately came to doubt, about a possible secret channel of email communication from the Trump Organization to a Russian bank. Law enforcement officials say none of those investigations have found any conclusive or direct link between Mr. Trump and the Russian government. Oh, my goodness. So there you go, debunk. But they really tried to come out hardcore last night in the in the final hours pushing this Russian agent story. 
But that wasn't going to work. So then they had to roll out this other story in the New York Times. Donald Trump used a legally dubious method to avoid paying taxes decades ago. So Donald Trump, a billionaire, uses a, a loophole that's legally available to any billionaire decades ago. This, this, this loophole has since been outlawed, of course, but at the time, it was completely legal. It was readily available to any billionaire to exploit this tax loophole to where he didn't have to pay a dime. Now, I don't like it, but we all know it's happening. That's why I'm saying I'm not gonna be surprised by what I find in some billionaires tax returns. Um, this is why I was really supporting Rand Paul and his calls for a flat tax to just eliminate this grotesquely insane tax code we have that of course people who make a lot of money and companies and others are going to exploit. Heck, I try to pay the least amount of taxes as I possibly can. So it doesn't surprise me someone paying billions would exploit a loophole. And of course, this is what Donald Trump pointed out in the debate. This is a loophole that Hillary Clinton failed to close during her years in the United States Senate. Why didn't she close those loopholes? But meanwhile, not only has Hillary Clinton herself used similar loopholes to avoid paying taxes, her Wall Street fundraising actually benefited from a loophole in a federal anti-corruption rule. So this is a, a Securities and Exchange Commission they um, enacted this rule to stop campaign donations to public officials from financial firms seeking to convince those officials to hire them to manage public employees' retirement assets. So this was a pay-to-play rule. It applied to restrictions to state and local officials, but not to uh, federal agencies. They could still be um, kind of bankrolled. And that's exactly what they've done. Um, they Top officials from the investment firm BlackRock hosted Hillary Clinton at campaign fundraisers earlier this year. They basically bankrolled her campaign. She's raised more than a million dollars from financial firms that are contracted to manage these assets. And so this is the same thing we saw with President Obama, uh, BlackRock and others raised a lot of campaign money for him at the time. And then what does he he do? He goes and allows these companies to manage the retirement uh, funds for public employees. So we know it's a pay to play, uh, but Hillary exploited a loophole so that all that cash could come in at her fundraiser. So there you go. But the hypocrisy doesn't stop there. Now today, her thing in Ohio, she or, or maybe it was in Florida, excuse me. She brings out Miss Universe, uh, Miss Machado. She rolls her out, Miss Machado reintroduces Hillary Clinton to bring back around the scandal. This is how you know they're all out of ammo. They're 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 dying here because they're bringing back out their October surprise, Miss Alicia Machado, to to reiterate that Trump is bad for women and he doesn't care about women. When Hillary Clinton herself decades ago, set the precedent, showed what her principles are when it came to how she is the champion for women and children. When she defended a rapist who raped a 12 year old girl, uh, raped her so brutally that she was in, put in a coma for about five days, woke up, had to have surgery, was told she would never be able to have children. And the Federalist wrote a really great article today about how Hillary Clinton learned how to manipulate the law by defending this child rapist. Now, we actually had Kathy Shelton in studio today to retell this story and to talk a little bit about how it feels to have had her life destroyed by Hillary Clinton, you know, in 1975, and then years later, having to hear this woman say how sexual assault survivors deserve to be believed. You look at Hillary Clinton's career, and it baffles me so much that she has a that she has been allowed, mostly by our mainstream press and to the shame of her own party, to somehow be held up as some kind of champion for women and, and fighter for for justice for children through 40 years of her career when time after time she's chosen the side of rapists just to make herself look good. I wanna send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. Hillary's on tape laughing saying that she knows that they're guilty. I have the power. Has made some other remarks and uh, down the line, and um, I'm standing up for what's right for me because I know it happened, and 
um, she's trying to make me look like a liar and that I asked for it and, and all that. And, 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 and by the way, we should pull up a photo of you when you were 12. Uh, that's, uh, that's online. People can also go to theirlivesfoundation.net. We can put that website uh, on screen for people so we can personalize this. I mean, you were a little girl. I have a 12-year-old daughter. I have an 8-year-old daughter. And, you know, before I had daughters and children, I would get upset hearing about abuse of women and children. But now, it, I mean, I'm going to be honest. It makes me just start feeling very violent whenever I think about people ab ab abusing little girls, especially. Now that's Hillary bragging to journalists she thinks are her friends that she cut the blood out of his underwear, her blood, and she's get, getting off on it. It's like, what freaking planet does this demon come from? That's the thing. In all the WikiLeaks, which confirms everything you said, they get off on bad. Where they could do better doing good, they don't. They want to do bad. Well, she talked about having public positions versus private positions. And apparently, public position is, I need to be a, a defender of women and children. Private position? I cut the bloody, I cut the blood off his underwear. I'm people. proud. I'm proud of getting somebody off like this. I just want to win. I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard, and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. Well, this morning we learned that the FBI was looking into uh, Trump's alleged ties with Russia. They did investigating for much of the summer, actually, uh, looking for financial connections with Russian financial figures. They were looking for people involved uh, with the hacking of the computers with the Democrats there, and also scrutinized advisors of Donald Trump and they said, look, we have found no link. But it turns out now we're learning that a lot of Hillary Clinton's key advisors are also the focus of a major FBI investigation. Margaret Howell joins me now. So what are we seeing here with this, I mean, five separate FBI cases? Isn't this crazy? So the FBI, they're probing a five Entity surrounding Hillary Clinton, of course, whom Abedin is uh, number one. Uh, they're looking at her. Uh, possibly she's um, committed perjury. That would be one aspect of this. And uh, more on that. Terry McAuliffe is perhaps the biggest bombshell in this uh, this uh, information because the the claim that he sold um, access to the Chinese for uh, you know access to Hillary Clinton that uh, we we saw this policy change um, in relation to money being changed hands. They're looking at his involvement with a with a Chinese investor named Wang Wenliang currently. And this is going to be one of the biggest stories of 2017. It's under wraps now, very corrupt Virginia governor and uh, very close to the Clintons. He was the guy that gave uh, 600,000 of his own money to Jill McCabe, the wife of the deputy director investigating Clinton. So more on him and it's it's trickling out also, Cheryl Mills, who cut that deal with the FBI for criminal immunity to go ahead and hand over what she had. Uh, so everybody around her is basically corrupt or on par with being as corrupt as she is. John Podesta, of course, and the Clinton Foundation also under investigation and a string of other people that are low level within her campaign that uh, have possibly uh, committed criminal acts under Clinton. So major cesspool. Right. Will. Virtually everyone in Clinton's inner circle <laughs> and their families are involved now <laughs> being probed by the FBI. Of course, uh, something else that we're learn that we're learning is emails are showing that the Justice Department official who actually oversaw the Clinton probe initially has close ties to P Podesta. Mm -hmm. uh, he was actually trying to get his son uh, to be involved in Hillary Clinton's campaign. Right. Um, I mean, it's just it's just so messy. What, what needs to happen, so John Podesta, his BFF over at the DOJ, is the one that is presumably in charge of the uh, criminal investigation, putting it together against Hillary Clinton. That needs to change immediately, that official. Uh, but look, Leanne, we've seen this unsuccessful attempt by the Democrats. They're jumping ship like rats. Nobody wants to touch her anymore. She's right. become a pariah, Leanne of sorts. <laughs> exactly. Like this. Well, they were kind of seeing the writing on the wall uh, back in 2015, in fact, Podesta was telling uh, Cheryl Mills, you know, we've, we're going to have to dump all of those emails. Better to d do it sooner rather than later. Right. They're all kind of joking about um, her other aide, Neera Tandon, was said 
Whoever told Clinton she could use the server should be drawn and quartered. I mean, so it, w within her inner workings, they know there's going to be some major trouble. And they're like, how can we clean this up? Even the president's come out saying, I didn't know she had this private email. And they're like, why would he say that? Of course he emailed his top <laughs> official. You know, what a blatant lie, which is also a felony to uh, go on national television and say I didn't have any knowledge when... Clearly, you had knowledge because we have written confirmation that you had knowledge. You know, this unsuccessful, tired narrative they've been using, the KGB is after our democracy. You know, we even heard James Carville. I thought he was having a stroke on mainstream <laughs> media today. Or you know, I was watching a playback where he was blaming the Russians. I'm like, dear yeah. God, stop it already. Yeah. It's over. Get, get off of it. <laughs> Correct. It's, it's just, it's hilarious. I literally thought he was having a stroke. We also see Chris Matthews in support of Trump a couple of days ago. I'm like, wait a second. The fourth estate is also leaving her, which yeah. is hilarious. Well, that's the thing is a lot of people are now beginning to see the writing on the wall and they can see that corruption surrounds her. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew that they were propping her up in the first place because so many of them were involved mm -hmm. in all of this and she would have taken them all down with her like a house of cards. So they mm -hmm. had to prop her up. Mm -hmm. But now they're seeing, I mean, with, with James Comey coming out and doing this, they're like, wow, they've either got a lot of dirt somewhere that they know is going to be released um, by WikiLeaks or, or Kim.com or someone else has a lot more information to be forthcoming. So they got to get ahead of this and not get taken down with her. Um, but it, it is very interesting to see the changing tide. As Alex Jones keeps saying, it's like an amazing time to be alive right now. Even the ABC poll, just really quickly, has Trump up the Daily Checker by one percentage point. Who would have ever thought in the history we would ever be seeing, we would ever see ABC actually say that Trump is ahead of Clinton? I, I nearly, you could fall out of my chair right now. This is a remarkable time. Could Huma Abedin just destroy Hillary Clinton? It's certainly looking that way. We have an article up on our website. The feds have leaked new information regarding Wienergate. It just could derail her campaign entirely, also could indict her. Now, it's been a hell of a week for Hillary Clinton. Michelle Obama is unretweeting tweets from Hillary. Uh, Jason Chavitz, he's under an investigation, uh, an ethics probe, because he's been threatened with smearing the campaign while liberal talking heads are saying that he's responsible for the FBI probe being reopened. But what we do know, here's what we know. The FBI, they've reopened this criminal investigation into one of the two presidential candidates running for president, Hillary Clinton. That's major news, don't you think? You think we could see this trending on Twitter more than we have? Anyway, Clinton, after discovering this new information, and it's because of Anthony Weiner and those infamous blackberries he was using to send little nudie pics of himself to a 15 year old minor he was under investigation for the feds this we know this week but apparently there are bombshells on this blackberry that could very well indict hillary clinton now we know that clinton she worked on the uh, nixon uh, watergate uh committee and she understands the importance of destroying the evidence she thought that she'd gotten rid of all of it, smashing those blackberries with a hammer. It looks like she forgot one little device which actually could bring her down. Now, regarding this article specifically that's on our site, uh, it details on Monday the thousands of new emails from the Clinton campaign and John Podesta that were, of course, published by WikiLeaks. And within this new data dump, there was this smoking gun proof that the White House was colluding with Clinton to cover up the fact that Obama had lied to Congress. Oh, and to you and I both, uh, that Clinton, he didn't know that she was using that private homebrew server out of her closet uh, to send classified information, unsecured emails. He had no idea. When we know that Cheryl Mills, she had an oh, you know what moment, writing John Podesta and said, you know what, they're, they're both uh, sending emails. He's, got, he's gotten the emails. He understands it. We've got to clean this up. That was the information shared by WikiLeaks. And it looks like this could very well... Oh, re reopen this criminal investigation. It could also cause Clinton to go to prison. And that's the main thing here because we have proof that she knew her actions were illegal. She thought that she'd gotten rid of all of the evidence. She didn't. She missed Wiener. And it looks like uh, this sex scandal could actually derail her because of her relationship with Huma Abedin. Now, the FBI's mutiny to reopen the Clinton investigation has been unbelievable. Well, this damning evidence, it's unraveling Clinton campaign, it's hemorrhaging at the neck, and we're covering it all for you as we have it. Well, check out this article in its entirety. It's up on our website, Infowars.com. While you're at it, download our app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com.
All right, everybody, this is Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Now, I keep seeing a lot of misinformation being spread across social media. People uh, seeing uh, false WikiLeaks emails. And, uh, you know, when you read them, it's too good to be true. So I found this one right here. I think this is the, uh, the best fake one so far because it says, subject, the dogs are loose. Uh, you can see that right here, which is kind of funny. It says, I'll be meeting with Soros later this week for some pre-programming of machines. These machines will be humming in November. Well, you know, it, when it sounds too good to be true, more than likely it's too good to be true. So I had to post this to tell people to stop spreading misinformation because you're gonna have people in the Clinton campaign, people out there that are gonna Photoshop and make these fake emails so people spread them so when actual real bombshell information comes out it kind of takes away from that so we need to get out of the habit of doing that so everybody needs to learn how to use wikileaks and how to take one of these uh emails as you see right here where it says i'll be meeting with source later and i'm going to show you how to go over into wikileaks and we're going to look for it so since it says machines will be humming right here that's something that sticks out that you're not normally gonna see. We're gonna go here. You click on Podesta email, since these are the ones that they're referring to, because uh, in the back, I'll show you really quick. It has uh, John Podesta in here. So that's part of the Podesta WikiLeak email thing. So you go to wikileaks.org, like I said, we'll go back. This will be the main page of WikiLeaks. Here's the Podesta part right here. You click on it. And then you put in quotation marks, the machines will be humming in quotation. And before you hit submit, let's go back and make sure machines will be humming. So you want to make sure you have the right thing. And then it's just this easy to find out whether or not it's real or not. Your query return no results whatsoever that shows you that that is a fake uh, photoshopped podesta wikileak email that does not exist they're not going to be coming out talking like that blatantly uh telling you that they're going to have all this you know kind of corruption it's stuff you're gonna have to dig for uh if you don't believe me on that one let's say meeting with soros later so we'll try that so back here since it's a sentence meeting with Soros later. Now there's always a possibility that that could bring something up, but no, your query returned no results because that email does not exist. Now let's look at this. We're on my page. Let's go to Podesta emails, Podesta 25. That is the newest dup for today. And here you'll see people take screenshots, things like that. And the easiest way, if you see something, you want to find out whether or not it's real. Because people are going to take screenshots. You're not going to know the email number or whatever it is it may be. So here we go. This one says, so we can say all these things you like, uh, like her to say, but when she says she's against reinstating on that debate stage, I'm worried that will be shorthanded as she's probing. So let's find out if that's real or a fake email. So we're gonna use shorthanded as she's. So shorthanded as, let's make sure we got it. Shorthanded as she's. And then we'll click on this, there you go. Shows you that this is a real email. Then you open up the email, you command F over here, shorthanded, and as you see right down here, I am worried that will be shorthanded as she's pro bank. So you can see that that's a real email. It's searchable. It's in the WikiLeaks uh, data dump um, from the Podesta emails. And this is an easy way. It literally takes two seconds to find out if these emails are fake or real because we need to get out of the habit of just seeing something on Twitter, seeing something on Facebook and thinking that that person's already done their research and that person is a trusted source uh, for gathering uh, what it is you need to, to be informed and to be able to share that and not look like a dumbass. 
So let's do one more just to go over. It says, off record, if press on whether we are essentially admitting the possibility that she deleted some emails. Um, if pressed on weather. So we'll do that. So we'll go here one more time. Boom. Here we go. Off record. If press on whether we are essentially admitting the possibility that she deleted some emails. So there you go. This is a quick, easy step. So let's go back and look at it from the beginning one more time to help you guys out. So if you see something that looks this good to be true, I'll be meeting with Source later this week for some pre-programming of machines. You know, that's obviously something that someone's photoshopped. You just go back here, main page, click on the Podesta email or whatever the new dump is by WikiLeaks. We don't know what's coming out tomorrow. And then you go in here, put in quotations, a sentence that's going to stand out, type that sentence, hit search. If it pops up, it's real. If it doesn't pop up, then it doesn't. And if multiple things pop up, like in an email, then what you want to do is once you get into that email, like say we're in this email right now, you do command F, which at the top up here will give you an area and just look for a keyword. Help. Uh, language boom and you can find that word in there so this is just a quick tutorial on how to spot fake wikileaks so everyone should know from now on when you see one that sounds too good to be true get on wikileaks look for yourself make sure that exists and if it's real then share it if it's not don't be part of the problem this has been joe biggs with infowars.com David Knight here with Danny Williams, the son of Bill Clinton. He uh, alleges he would like to get a test to prove it or to disprove it. And we just finished the press conference here. He is asking Monica Lewinsky to turn over her dress that has Bill Clinton's DNA on it. So that could uh, save him a very costly legal battle because Bill Clinton has not responded at all. Let me ask you. How do you feel about the fact that this has gone on for decades and Bill Clinton hasn't responded at all? He could end this very easily by correct. just voluntarily doing a, a DNA test, right? Right, correct. Um, you know, I have mixed feelings because, you know, you got the hurt feelings, but I also got the feelings that keep me pushing every day to keep going forward and doing what I'm doing today. I mean, it's the truth, and, and, and I, I'm going to do whatever I can to keep it out there. And, and whenever you talk to the mainstream media, like you did in, in Las Vegas, right. all they're interested in doing is, is attacking you yes, as a Trump surrogate, but you were pushing on this for decades before Trump was on the scene. Uh, it's a completely different political situation that we've got here now. Uh, I, I guess the question would be, why isn't the press concerned about this? They seem to be willing to believe right. women who have come uh, out after 30 years and say they were touched inappropriately at an event in many cases didn't even happen mm -hmm. and yet here's the situation where we know the proclivities of, of Bill Clinton and uh, for decades they have ignored this do, do you think that there's some kind of uh, special privilege uh, that, uh, that you know, we're always yeah, hearing about white privilege is there a Clinton privilege involved I mean, here not just special privileges I just think it's some kind of conspiracy going on between with them and the Clintons yeah, yeah. so yeah and of course we've seen that with the star uh, the, the close connections with the star and the fact that there's not been a DNA test. Now, we see even left-leaning fact-checkers, quote-unquote, like yes, Snopes, <laughs> saying that this is unproven. Yes, they don't say it's disproven, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it has not really been investigated. And so that's what you're trying to do here. You have yes, limited sir. financial acts, uh, uh, ability to mm -hmm. pursue this case. That's why it's coming up at this time. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Let me get your comments on the Black Lives Matter issue, because right. you mentioned this here. You said uh, Hillary Clinton says Black Lives Matter. I think Joel Gilbert said maybe it's just black votes that matter. Uh, do you think right. your black life matters to her? I don't think my black life matters, but I think you're right. It's just the black votes. And like I say, they've been hollering black life matters for the longest. So and I've been I've been out two years and a half with the social media and pushing my story. I feel if black lives truly matter, why not my, my, my little black life? I mean... Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, and I, I asked you this during the press conference to, to comment. I'd like to get it on, on this interview here. Yes, sir. Uh, to ask you to comment about the fact that Bill Clinton at 
the time that this was heating up in 1998, 1999, did a deadbeat father's bill. Correct. Unbelievable, the fact that he turned it from a misdemeanor into a felony. He talked about how for the education and the health of our children, we need to have fathers step forward. We're bankrupting the uh, welfare system because dads are not taking their responsibility. And he said it's for the future of the nation, and yet he would not even respond to you. Right, correct. I mean, I feel he's the deadbeat dad. Personally, myself, I've been raising, I raised my, I started raising my first child in 2003. I've been there since day one. I've been there through her hurt, through her hungry, through her dirty diapers, everything. And, it, you know, and it just hurt me to never experience that with my own father. And, you know, I promise my kids every day, you know, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to keep pushing until I'm able to get you guys to meet your grandfather one day. Well, let me say, Danny, when you talk about that, mm -hmm. you know, nobody has a perfect dad. And I got to say that what you have done right. in stepping up and reestablishing the role of a father, even when you didn't have a father, I really admire that. I honestly do. Right. You know, and, and that's the thing you have done. And, and you understand being there for your children, you know, that has its own reward. Yes, and so Bill Clinton has lost out on knowing a really fine man, Danny yes, Williams. Yes, uh, Thank you. And, uh... I'm just going to do my best. I'm going I'm to keep pushing it until he steps up, and I'm going to keep raising my kids. So thank you. Thank you so much, Danny. Yes, sir. Good luck to you. I hope you get closure on this. Thank you. Tell thank Alex you. I said hey. Will do. <laughs> Will do. Thank you. David Knight for InfoWars.com. Williams, you know, very nervous two years ago contacting us and Joe Biggs on Facebook. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I remember interviewing his aunt. Yeah, it looks like Bill Clinton probably is. I mean, sure. But then, you know, you talk to Danny, he's working, taking care of his kids, five kids. You know, was, he, he wasn't, you know, we were trying to get him on, but now that the campaign's big, he's now been able to speak out because this is the season to expose it. And he was nervous when he was in the studio with us, but he did a great job. Seeing him, the National Press Club, like 100 people in the room and dozens of cameras, or more than that, um, CNN, Fox, uh, you know, Russian TV, Japanese TV, I'm told. He did a great job, and uh, he really let it all out. And I was just watching him during a break because, we, you know, we obviously were cutting in during a break. Just his mannerisms just looks like Bill Clinton. And they never did a maternity test. They did a fake test. That's all come out. Why don't they just repudiate it? It's exciting to see this going so viral because it just adds into how fake these people are and how rigged it is. So, Danny Williams, I won't keep you long. I know you're busy. Thanks for this exclusive interview after the press conference, and thanks for Joel Gilbert. Because uh, I remember saying weeks ago, hey, you ought to have a national press club conference. I didn't know that got picked up on, or maybe somebody else thought of it too. But then suddenly I hear yesterday, oh, that press conference is happening. I'm supposedly running everything, and I learned about it yesterday. Uh, but uh, so tell us, you know, how this came to be, where this is going. Uh, what you called for today was pretty amazing. Right. Uh, me and my friends, we, we got together and we uh, had to set up a, another press conference. Actually, it, it came to be about uh, for us to YouTube, my YouTube channel being kicked out. but And we wanted to get the message out to Monica Lewinsky for us uh, trying to get a blue dress for the DNA sample of my father's. Uh, But it also went great. It went excellent, excellent. <laughs> no, it did. And 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 and, and you know, I, mean, I know your buddy's there throwing points, and he can jump in anytime he wants because this is all so important, Danny. And you're going through this for the first time. You've been trying to meet your dad. I remember interviewing your aunt when you were like six, seven years old, twenty years ago. Or uh, and I remember hearing you in the background while I was you know, while you, while she was on the show talking about it. Bill Clinton giving you the presents, the money, all of it. If he would have just embraced you, it would have been some big positive instead of trying to cover it up. Yes, sir. Well, the press conference went went really, really well. Uh, some folks tried to attack you, but this time, you know, it wasn't just press that was against you. Other points you'd like to add? Right. Uh, I want to thank Fox News and CBS for coming out. They came out today to uh, hold hold their um, position as um, showing support. But also, you know. I want to get this out. Hillary has the power to get Bill to submit to a DNA test. So I just want to ask her, please, to have your husband step up and submit to a DNA sample. 
Absolutely. When was the first time you were told that Bill Clinton was your father? Well, I've been told all my life, but the age of eight or nine was when I really realized what was really going on and who was my father. So, I, like I said, I've been knowing all my life since a kid. They've been pointing, you know, and when I was three, four years old, my uncle and them used to stick their hands through my hair and say, look at little Bill Clinton's son with this curly hair, you know, and all this. So I've actually been told, been told that all my life. But to, to really be understanding and know for myself, I was like eight or nine years old. Well, the media keeps trying to act like you just came up with this. This has been in the newspapers for 20-something years. You've always said this. The Clintons always dodge it. They act like we're doing this now because of the campaign season. Well, obviously, these people are liars. We're trying to force it now because now we can get attention on something. Right. And correct. And um, it's, it's, it's not that I've been just now doing it. I've been doing this. I've been coming out on the media and social media for two and a half years. And, you know, it's actually... Why now the uh, media is giving me the attention is because, you know, the, she's running again. And, and it's just also give me another chance to, to show the world and, and, and let them know that, you know, Bill Clinton is my father and, and I'm trying to prove it. Well, as you pointed out over and over again, you're not attacking him, any of it. You just want to meet your father or you just want to have the, 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 the paternity test. And he could do that right now. Now, I wonder if, 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 if Monica Lewinsky is going to respond. Right, I, I hope she does, and it's it just I just want to be accepted by my father and my stepmother, and you know, and I'm I hope and pray that you know Monica Lewinsky will step up and or you know just at least coming back on coming back on in and let us know you know is she willing to do it or if not you know. <laughs> Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Owen Troyer with you. And we've got more exit polls, more man on the streets coming out for you. And this recent one is the last one that I did. And what we'll see here is something very interesting. Now, I'd never had an election official actually come out and talk to me like this one did. I had no problem with that. He was making sure that we were abiding by the law. Perfectly fine. He came out again, though and essentially was trying to intimidate us and without saying it i think that he kind of outed himself as a democrat and a hillary clinton supporter but that's just my assumption but the one thing that was interesting to me is when he says well you're asking people about rigged elections there's only one candidate saying stuff about that no actually both candidates are so this is again nonpartisan. donald trump is saying that the elections might be rigged um, citing the machines and what the Democrats have been caught doing. And then Hillary Clinton is saying they might be rigged, citing the Russians are meddling. So I'm not sure which candidate he was talking about, but based on the people I've talked to, I think we can take a guess it's Hillary Clinton because nobody seems to know about Hillary Clinton blaming the Russians. Here's the report from yesterday. Owen Schroyer for InfoWars.com. I am standing outside of an early voting place. This is actually considered the mega early voting place. They have got extra machines in there, so you don't have to wait in line. And actually, this is the fourth early voting place I've been to, and this is the least amount of people that I've actually seen. So I'm not sure if that's because early voting has been going on so long that everybody's already done it. Maybe it's Halloween, people are staying in, or perhaps it's just a dead location. But this is supposed to be the biggest one. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little exit polling, but mainly what we're going to try to figure out is if people are worried about election fraud or voter fraud, if they're worried about the integrity of this election, we have massive amounts copious amounts of evidence that can prove election fraud and voter fraud goes on and the most recent evidence is the bev harris fractional magic report that we've covered that came out today that is really groundbreaking and shows in real time how the election results can be manipulated so with all this proof with all this evidence let's go find out do the American people worry about the integrity of the upcoming election? You just finished up your early voting in Austin, Texas. Who'd you vote for today, sir? I'm a Democratic. Straight Democrat ticket? Democrat. So Hillary Clinton? Yes, sir. Let me ask you a question, sir. Do you trust the electronic voting machines? Uh, well, I have no other. What, other. what other alternative do we have? To accept that they're probably rigged like everything else in this country? Uh... 
<laughs> you couldn't have fooled there. I mean, do you trust the integrity of these elections? We have to. If not, then there's no reason for us to be here. Are you worried, though, that people might be trying to meddle with them? Possibly, but I, I feel like there's a uh, enough checks and balances that the right thing, the right outcome will, will happen. Independently owned, um, so that there's not bias by the government. But um, we need to look into like who it's owned by, and if that independent um, is is there by bias within that independent organization. So what if you saw programs who go and they run the same process that the electronic voting machines do, and then they show how the results can be switched or fixed using decimals and fractions? Would you maybe lose trust then? Yeah, for sure. So that's what we've just discovered. Yeah, that seems like it's a thing that's happening right now. So don't you think it's important no matter what side you're on, whether you like Hillary or Donald, that we should all be looking at the electronic voting machines? And if we have doubts in the integrity, perhaps maybe going back to paper ballots? Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't mind taking the time. If that's, what, if that's what we have to do to get our results correct, it's probably worth it, don't yeah, you think? absolutely. And I think it should be fair for everybody, no matter who you're voting for. I'm the election deputy in here. Yes, how you doing? Owen Troyer from Infowars.com. Max Fisher. You're probably okay as mm -hmm. long as you don't discuss candidates, right. and particularly by name, which that lady did. Um, but if we're just doing exit it's polling, though, as long as I don't say anything? as long as you're out in a way. So they can't say the name either. They're really not supposed to, because somebody standing here could think they were electioneering. If I'm saying, if we didn't even bring up any of the candidates, and we were just Yeah, no, asking, who did you vote for? Yeah, yeah, no names, story. and we just said, do you trust the electric voting machines, and that was it? I think that that would be okay, though. Why would you think they didn't trust the machines? Well, there's a lot of people. Well, that's why we're out here. Yeah, there's all the reports going on. Ballot. They just ran tests so on the machines. So you're interested in all kinds of rumors and stuff. Why don't y'all call out to the election office and get permission and then come here if you want? Hi, Mr. Eagle. You want to talk to us? Yeah. You, really? You don't want to talk to us at all? People are concerned the election is going to be rigged. I guess they're really going to be concerned when they see you turn your back on us. Yeah. yeah. Well, can I talk to him? Will anybody here talk to us? Or do you want to rig this? Why are you cutting off all these audit trails? Why are you cutting down the paper audit trails? Well, there you go. That should tell you something. People are concerned about elections being rigged. You've got the Director of Elections here, the Secretary of State office, that won't talk to us. Takes one look at the press and turns around and walks off. We would really prefer you not run down our system. People don't really trust anything anymore. I'm just asking people, a question. It's not my okay. report. Oh, I know, but when you ask it in a certain way, you actually influence the person. Well, I hope I would influence them to do some research. But they won't. Well, you do realize that one of the candidates is the one who's calling into question whether these things work or not. Which makes it a political statement. There's no, 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 that's not Have true. Have you talked with the people who made these things? Have you talked with the people out there who programmed them? I was on ballot control one time. They call us out there and they make sure that those machines are 100% accurate. We worked. Well, Would you want to do an interview with us? Then? No. For Hart was, or what company? I prefer Diebold or Smartmatic? Hart. Hart's the one that does these. Uh, their name used to be something different. Uh, but it's Hart now, Hart Graphics. And it's the one used in Dallas and Houston and uh, El Paso, I think it is. I'm just saying, it's such a complicated thing to talk about it being fixed is ridiculous. I'd have so to keep disagree, play, though. Keep playing around. Yeah, you disagree? I, I but worked, I'm not doing anything worked, illegal. We're, we're not I've trying to play around. We went I've to the, on it for the 20, Capitol office. Yeah. I've worked on it for 20 years, okay? But to sit here and say it's absurd, I mean, that's absurd. You're absurd. Sorry. You've got dead people voting and illegal people voting. Move beyond my marker. All right, sir, we will. I'll call a constable. Okay. We're not breaking any laws. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we just did some exit polling here, and we had to deal with an election official. Actually, we had to deal with him twice. The first time he asked us to move, um, even though we weren't breaking the law originally, he still had us move. We obliged. We wanted to continue doing our interviews. Then he came and harassed us again, said we weren't outside of the... 100 feet, even though it was his marker that we were obeying, he said we had to go even further. And then when we tried to talk to him, he didn't seem to like us very much. He said we were non existent, InfoWars doesn't exist because he's never heard of it. And apparently, election rigging doesn't exist either because he's never heard of it. He says that it's absurd for me to suggest that election rigging is going on. I mean, this is what's absurd is to sit here and deny that it's even possible. We've got registered dead voters. We've got, we know that they're pushing amnesty 
unconstitutionally to get people to vote. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of people that are registered to vote in multiple states. And now most recently we have reports about how they actually rig the voting machines. We've got them, folks. We've caught them. I'm just out here asking people what they think. I'm seeing if anybody's engaged, if anybody's awake. And what do we get? We get election officials that come out here and try to intimidate us from asking these questions. And you know what? Here's the thing about this guy. Honestly, I, I, I'm making this assumption. My guess is by the way he was talking to us and trying to bash Donald Trump, he probably likes Hillary Clinton. But, 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 but either way, what this guy's deal is, and you heard it, Oh, I've been an election official for 20 years. I've been doing this for decades. I know what I'm doing. So what? So it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. For whatever reason, you've been doing this for so long and you've ignored this evidence. Okay? We have it all now. So it doesn't matter how long you've been an election official. We have the evidence. We don't trust the results. And we're going to keep a close eye on this. And it's not absurd at all. But he has threatened to call the authorities, call the constable says we're breaking the law, even though we've done nothing of the sort, folks. I've done no electioneering here at all. But he threatened to call the authorities. He's been bothering us. So I'm not surprised. These are the kind of electioneers that uh, election officials that we deal with in Texas. It's really sad. We're just trying to maintain the integrity of the election. And election officials want to demonize us and get us booted from outside early voting stations. So there you have it, folks, election officials wanting us to stop talking to people and get off the ground. Thanks so much for everybody for tuning into the nightly news. Go to InfoWarStore.com to support the broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock central.